Hi. If you've heard sounds like this or this or this Testing one, two, three. or this and ever wondered what kind of synth it takes to make them, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll take a look at the magical timbral world of additive synthesis with a few practical examples. Let's start with the basics. If you've ever seen a spectrum analyzer in action, and if you watch my channel and you have, what you're actually looking at is a mathematical process that breaks down any sound, which is the scope you're seeing on the left, into independent sine waves oscillating at various levels at different frequencies, which is what you see on the spectrum analyzer on the right. So for example, an oscillator generating this shape, which is a sawtooth, is moving a speaker cone that in turn is moving the air, which when picked up can be analyzed and broken down on a spectrum analyzer into something like this, which if we get it to oscillate 100 times a second, you'll see in the case of a sawtooth wave is a series of harmonics at multiples of the fundamental, which is 100 hertz in this case. Now, if we were to take this sound and EQ it using a brick wall EQ and start isolating these harmonics, you'd hear they start to sound an awful lot like sine waves and look like those on a scope analyzing the audio coming out through the EQ, which when put together sounds like a sawtooth wave, obviously. So the theory is that any sound can be broken down into a bunch of sine waves oscillating at different frequencies. If we want to take this to the extreme, we could even take noise and bring our brick wall EQ, start to narrow down frequencies and see if this theory sounds right, down to a single sine wave at a single frequency, more or less, at different levels, obviously. And notice how we start splitting this apart. It still sounds sort of tonal. But as we bring in more oscillating sine waves at different levels, turns out it sounds pretty much like noise. So what we just did was break down a sound into individual sine waves. The principle behind additive synthesis is to reverse the process, meaning that if any sound can be broken down into sine waves at different levels, perhaps we can then go ahead and synthesize any sound we like simply by adding up a bunch of sine waves at different frequencies and at just the right levels. Let's take a look at a simple example of recreating a sound using additive synthesis. Ableton's operator is predominantly an FM synth, but it has a little window in it that lets you draw in partials at harmonic intervals, not any overtone or any frequency you like, but we'll get to that in a bit. Anyway, it lets you go up to 64 harmonics. Let's keep it at 16, and then try and redraw the shape that we saw earlier by adding additional harmonics. And notice, as we draw harmonics that look like a sawtooth wave's harmonics, we get a shape that pretty much looks like a sawtooth, more or less obviously, with substantially fewer harmonics. So we recreated something that looks sort of like a sawtooth wave. Now, if you're familiar with synthesis, you know that a waveform with every odd harmonic is a square wave. And if we delete every even harmonic, you see that we Again, not precisely, but sort of created the start of a square wave oscillator. Picking and choosing harmonics like this, by the way, is how drawbar organs work. And indeed, the original tone wheel organs, Hammond style organs, use the principles of additive synthesis to create their sounds. Now, this sound is nice but very static, the partials aren't moving, their level isn't changing. To kick this up a notch, we'll need a real additive synth. This is Alchemy, which is a pretty sophisticated synth that's built into Logic Pro. It has a bunch of engines, including virtual analog. We'll ignore them and step in directly to the additive engine. So it starts out very similar to Operator that we saw earlier. 
This is the fundamental, the first harmonic, only we get way more uh, partials if we want them here. Anyway, the nice thing about um, alchemy is that we can automate a bunch of parameters with respect to each individual partial. So let's say, for example, let's just go for, this is our fundamental and add, just to make sure that it's different, add this as another partial. Anyway, we can automate the volume or level, the tuning, the panning, and even the phase of each partial individually. So let's say, for example, I wanted this bass note to start out loud, but completely die out. And you can hear that, or maybe let's just leave it at a low level, the lower fundamental. And then I want the, um, yeah, the higher one to fade in. Let's have it uh, so go up to here and loop like this. Here we go. Right, so we've just de determined an envelope and a loop for both partials. We could also, if you wanted, set a pitch envelope for each of the partials. So let's go to our upper partial, maybe pitch it. Um, yeah, let's go up. Okay, so that's the, um, the upper partial going up and down, and our base partial is just static. And we could go ahead and do that for a bunch of partials as much as we'd like, with individual envelopes for each, a different panning if we wanted, by the way. You can even go ahead and change phase if you wanted. And obviously doing this one by one isn't a lot of fun. There are some tools here to move groups of partials together. Even that, I would guess, is not how you'd like to spend an afternoon, which is why both Alchemy and other synths have a bunch of tools to automate various motions, whether it's in level, in tuning, panning, and so on. And that's really what makes each additive synth special in its own right. Now, before we take a detailed look at how a bunch of synths let you wiggle these partials around, one interesting use for additive synthesis is resynthesis of entire audio or entire samples. Resynthesis is a process where audio is broken down into individual partials and the changes in level and frequency of each of these partials is recorded over time using individual envelopes for each partial. Not all additive synths can do this, but Alchemy can. Let's take a look at what this would look like. I'll bring in a sample. So I've got this Testing one, two, sample here and I could load it as a sample, but I'll use the additive import method and I could do this with or without formants. I'll do it without, just to keep it as clean and simple as possible. Hit import. So what Alchemy has gone ahead and done now is analyze the sample. It hasn't done anything with panning, but in terms of level and tuning, it broke it down into multiple individual partials, each partial with its own level envelope and apparently with its own tuning envelope as well. And if I hit a note, testing one, two, three, we hear the additive version testing one, two, three. of me saying testing one, two, three, and now we can pitch this up and down. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. And you'll notice that testing one, two, three. Unlike testing samples, one, two, three. which get shorter as you pitch them up. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This doesn't. Same for pitching it down, by testing the way. Testing one, two, three. Test, testing, push down, push down. It doesn't play slower. Testing one, two, three. It just pitches down. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Now in this sample, I just said testing one, two, three. I'll import a different file where I attempted to sing testing, testing one, two, three. two, three. So I attempted to sing testing one, two, three at C2 and... Testing one, two, three. Test, test, testing, testing one, testing one, two, and yeah, it's three. Testing one, more two, playable three. than the other version. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. And if you're familiar with samples or even granular synthesis, it just doesn't pitch quite like this. Logic Pro only works on a Mac, but if you've got either a Mac or a PC, 
check out Loom 2, which is a dedicated additive synth, which is pretty fantastic. Anyway, testing one, two, three. This is what I sound like on it. Testing one, two, three. Now, while this may testing, sound like I'm trying out for the Cylon one, two, Community three. Choir, Testing one, two, it's actually way three. better than any vocoder Testing I've heard. One, two, three. Obviously works completely Testing differently. One, two, three. Now aside from pitching resynthesized sounds up and down, you can also speed them up or slow them down. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. And that could work pretty nicely. Again, not chopped up Testing like granular synths. Obviously, it's not perfectly natural. Testing one, two, three. If you're interested in this in hardware form, by the way, the Continuum has a really good implementation of a resynthesis algorithm. Currently, you can't resynthesize your own samples into it, but I think they're working on that. So that's resynthesis, the extreme case of automation within an additive synth. Let's take a look at a few more down-to-earth options which give additive synths their special character. I'll start with Pigments, which is a pretty comprehensive synth from Arturia. It recently got an added harmonic oscillator, which is its built-in additive synth. And the first interesting thing we can do with an additive synth is to break free from the even harmonic ratio. So anything that's not an even multiple is where things start to sound interesting. Different additive synths may have a different maximum amount of partials. And if there's a control to modulate the number of partials, it works kind of like a low pass filter. Now, as we look at the different parameters that you can play with with different additive synths, I think it helps to think of the different things we're changing about a partial, whether it's the partial's frequencies or the frequency intervals, which is what we do with ratios, the partial amplitude, which is what we do, say, with a parameter like tilt, or the partial panning, which is what you do with panning parameters and different panning modes. One of the interesting tools you'll find in additive synths is the spectrum or EQ curve tool. This lets you choose from a number of what may look like EQ curves, but really are a series of level automation values for the partials in your sound. So let's maybe pick one, and you can typically morph between at least two of these. So that automation is applied to levels of partials and not the spectrum, meaning that if we extend the partial ratios, then the EQ curve will extend as well. To move even further away from, uh, from regular synths, there are a few operations we could apply to a specific window within um, the spectrum. For example, gain, which is a simple one. It's sort of like resonance in additive synth terms, but it gets more interesting with a few crazier tools like cluster, which um, can bring partials together like this. And everything here should be modulated. But you can see how we are certainly not in subtractive synth Kansas here as we explore different ratios. Now, obviously, you need to uh, strike a balance between what <laughs> sounds crazy and what's playable. But if you're bored with your subtractive synth or have been commissioned to write a sci fi movie soundtrack, this might work. Another interesting modifier here is Shepherd's Mode, which can be used to create Shepherd's Tone-like sounds. Let's go for a more traditional ratio. So as we modulate this parameter, the partials will slowly morph. 
from one harmonic to the next, and we can, of course, modulate this with an LFO. Let's go for this. Choose LFO2 and apply it here. We get that endless descending or uh, yeah, we could make this ascending as well. So this is great for otherworldly sounds, but you could use additive synthesis for more natural sounding sounds. Let's take a look at an example. So when you start to mess with different ratios, you start to get a feel for the language of additive synthesis. And then look at the special tools that each of these synths have. For example, the cluster feature within pigments. And just mess around with how the two interplay with each other. I think can bring out some pretty interesting sweet spots. Let's take a look at Razor from Native Instruments. A brief tour, these are the oscillators, these are the filters, which in additive terms are those EQ curves that I talked about earlier, and then these are the different uh, frequency ratio manglers, and there are a bunch of options here. We won't go through all of these, but just a few noteworthy ones. These partial ratio manglers can make for some pretty sweet and gnarly effects. Bring the partials closer together or spreading them apart. Like I said, there are quite a few of these, each with their own special character. If I clear things out a bit here, there are some pretty interesting oscillators in here, basically different selections of partials and how they appear. The uh, sick pitch bend is a nice example where you can cycle through uh, just different partials in different interesting ways. And then also noteworthy are the partial effects. These are sort of like your regular effects, only that they don't work on audio, but rather work on partials, like this reverb, which only modulates partial levels. And then one more interesting thing here, remember the EQ curves and how you can morph between different ones. There's a vowel EQ curve here, which uh, lets you pick different vowels and morph between them. Now you'll find some attractive synths that have that too. It's just nice that it does this uh, on the partials. By the way, within Razor, you could see uh, the different filters and oscillators independently. So you could uh, see their impact independent of whatever else is going on, or just look at everything together. There's also a nice uh, 3D view if you want. <laughs> anyway. Let's move on to another nice one. Polyphila is a Max for Live app that, uh, aside from having a nice visualizer, has a really nice feature, which lets you apply a custom amp envelope through different partials at different times based on a number of parameters. And... Uh, This process of scanning through partials can sound really nice. Let's take a look at uh, a few of these presets. They just scan through the partials one by one. I just love how different additive synth manufacturers come up with these creative ways to modulate partials. Let's go back to Loom for a bit. As you go through these synths, you'll see sometimes dozens of different additive effects. One last one that I wanted to show you that I thought was really nice was Decay within Loom 2. So if we listen to this sound, pretty nasty raw source, but 
if we turn on the uh, decay effect, you'll see that it becomes quite magical. Now what the decay effect does, if we look at the help here, is just fades out different partials at different rates based on this high and low parameter. But uh, the effect sounds very physical as you play around with the partials that it lets stick around. So that was just the tip of the iceberg for now. I've put together a bunch of additive synthesis ideas and tricks in my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Don't forget to ring the bell after subscribing to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.